catfishing is the act of online deception, whereby the deceiver invents and assumes a fake online identity in order to lure the interaction and attention of unsuspecting internet users. This nefarious activity can be motivated by love, revenge, jealousy, or, as this video explores, for many other reasons. Today, Fact Faction looks at five of the darkest and twisted catfish stories. In 2012, when a CIA agent became involved in an online feud marked by jealousy and lust, things were about to take a strange and brutal twist. 30-year-old Janelle Potter, who lived with her parents, led a sheltered and lonely existence, and due to health conditions was unable to lead a normal life for a woman of her age. She did have a boyfriend, but she was forced to keep this relationship a secret from her overbearing parents. To compensate for this, Janelle lived much of her life through social media, where anonymous trolls insulted, belittled, and even threatened to rape and assault her. Janelle suspected that these anonymous messages were being sent by two of her former Facebook friends, young couple Billy Payne and Billy Jean Hayworth. This Facebook feud, which had been a long-term affair, began when Hayworth suspected that Janelle was attracted to her boyfriend Payne. At this point, a CIA agent who communicated online simply by the name of Chris became involved. He claimed that he was determined to help Janelle and kept in regular contact with her and her overprotective parents. Chris knew a great deal about the personal lives of all three and seemed very aware of details which proved his involvement in the feud. In some of his emails, Chris insisted that Payne and Hayworth, whom he had allegedly been monitoring, were attempting to kill Janelle and that Janelle's life was in immediate danger. As these emails continued to build, Janelle's father became angry and desperate and vowed to do anything possible to help his daughter. When Payne and Hayworth were found dead in their Tennessee home, he naturally became the number one suspect. The couple were found with fatal gunshot wounds to the head. Payne's throat had also been slashed and Hayworth was found cradling her seven-month-old child who survived the ordeal unharmed. Janelle's father later confessed to these killings. Investigators, after searching the home computer of the Potter family, discovered that CIA agent Chris did not exist and that all emails from this enigmatic stranger were actually sent by Janelle herself to convince her family that she was in danger. She fed her own delusions and those of her parents in order to avenge pain for her alleged unrequited love. Although she did not pull the trigger herself, Janelle was charged with first-degree murder along with her father and mother. Jamie Curd, Janelle's secret boyfriend who is believed to have assisted Janelle's father in the crime, was also charged and sentenced to 25 years. Despite this, Janelle still denies sending any of the incriminating emails and maintains that she was not playing the part of Chris. Prosecutors believe that Janelle intentionally manipulated her parents into believing that Payne and Hayworth needed to be killed. All four continue to serve their sentences. In 2014, 19-year-old Marissa Williams, who lived in Alabama with her aunt, had an unusual and dangerous habit of befriending strangers on social media and inviting them back to her home. When her concerned aunt criticized her for this behavior, Marissa blocked her on Facebook, meaning that her aunt was no longer able to track or monitor her online behavior. Marissa, unaffected by her aunt's concerns, continued to befriend people online and soon began talking regularly to a user called Trey Topdog Ellis. During their very first conversation, Marissa invited him to come to her home to get drunk and offered him sex if he was willing to pay her $50 phone bill. He did not accept her invitation, but the pair continued to communicate online. Over the next few days, Marissa confided in Trey and told him all about her problems with her aunt. She eventually asked Trey to rescue her from her family, chillingly telling him that he could shoot and kill her aunt if she got in the way. Over time, these plans became more complex and increasingly ruthless and cruel. Marissa asked Trey to kill her aunt and her partner, along with her cousin and their family dog. She also asked Trey to bring a getaway car so that they could escape quickly. 
What Marissa didn't know was that Trey did not exist. The account had actually been created by her concerned aunt, who was hoping to teach Marissa a lesson on the dangers of meeting strangers online. When this lesson wasn't heeded, and when Marissa's communications with the fictional Trey became more sinister and dangerous, her aunt became distressed. She reported these conversations to authorities, who subsequently charged Marissa with solicitation of murder. After her arrest, Marissa apologized and claimed that she had no real intention of following through with her plans. When 29-year-old Brian Heil began a two-year-long online relationship with Tiffany Watkins, the two would regularly send explicit pictures and communicate over the internet. Heil became besotted with Watkins and would send, amongst other images, graphic pictures of his penis. Eventually, after talking for over a year, Heil became frustrated that the two were yet to meet in person, so he decided to track his girlfriend down. After a lengthy online search, he discovered that these images had actually been sent by a gay man who lived in South Africa, and that Watkins herself had absolutely no knowledge of any of these interactions. Watkins did not know either the man who had been sharing her images or Heil himself. Heil, who lived with his grandmother at the time, became furious that his lover wasn't real and that he had been sending lewd private images to a fake profile. He allegedly told his grandmother, quote, Grandma, it's a gay. I hate gay guys. He then concocted a plan to kill the hoaxer along with Watkins and her boyfriend, despite the fact that the latter two were in no way responsible for or aware of what had occurred. Heil boarded a bus from Michigan to California with the intention of murdering Watkins and her partner. Heil's brother contacted police as he and his family were suspicious that Heil had plans to murder those who he felt had wronged him. Heil was found and arrested only a mile away from the home of Watkins. Later in the investigation, a notebook was found in which Heil had written many details about his plans. One section coldly listed weapons and tools which he planned to implement, including rope, duct tape, chloroform, mace, a knife, and a trench coat. The notebook also stated that he wanted to learn to pick locks and contained his would-be victims' addresses, phone numbers, and even their favorite restaurant. This personal information was gathered by Heil after he managed to hack into Watkins' email account. In 2013, Heil was found guilty of interstate stalking with the intent to kill, injure, or harass, and was ordered to serve five years in prison. In 2005, Jessie Schuyler began circulating sensual and provocative pictures of herself online in an attempt to garner the sexual attention of eager young men. Under the alias of Tall Hot Blonde, she would talk to many men online and had a catalog of alluring pictures in order to tempt those with whom she was chatting. Over time, one particularly special relationship developed with a young man named Maureen Sniper, who was soon bound for duty in Iraq and the two communicated via explicit messages for over a year. It seemed that the two teenagers had found a fulfilling mutual love. However, the face behind Maureen Sniper was not who he seemed. The account was actually owned by Thomas Montgomery, an unhappy middle-aged man with a dead-end job and a miserable marriage. When his wife discovered a stash of photos, notes, and women's underwear, she was furious with her husband and wrote to Jesse to expose the real identity of her apparent lover. Montgomery later told reporters that the online relationship with Jesse had become more real to him than real life. Notes which he had written to himself seemed to indicate that he was losing touch with reality and that his online persona was becoming the most important part of his unfulfilling life. After finding out, Jesse was furious that the relationship had been called off and planned her revenge by starting another online love affair with a colleague of Montgomery, 22-year-old Brian Barrett. When this affair became known to Montgomery, he swiftly became jealous of Barrett, particularly amid claims that Barrett had been offered Jesse's virginity. During this period, Montgomery and Jesse continued to chat online, which only seemed to exacerbate Montgomery's rage. At one point, he told her that Brian Barrett will pay in blood. One night after leaving work, Barrett was shot dead by the jealous Montgomery with a sniper rifle. Montgomery was sentenced to 20 years for murder. But the deception doesn't end there. 
After all of this occurred, it became clear to investigators that Jesse knew absolutely nothing about any of these relationships or exchanges. The tall, hot blonde account had in fact been created and managed by Mary Sheeler, Jesse's very own mother. Mary had secretly been sharing these images, underwear, details, and notes without the knowledge of her daughter, and had been conducting these lewd and lascivious online interactions while playing the part of her young and attractive child. Mary could not be charged for her responsibility in any part of this ordeal, as she was found to have broken no law. However, she did not come out unscathed. After everything became clear, her husband filed for divorce, and she now speaks to neither him nor her daughter. In September of 2013, a 14-year-old girl who can't be named for legal reasons was contacted online by who she believed was a 16-year-old boy. The two quickly became friends, exchanged numbers, and began texting each other and talking daily. After a couple of weeks, the pair began calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend, even though they had never actually met in real life. The young girl was asked by her online boyfriend to send him sexually explicit photos. She refused at first, but soon gave in. After dating for a couple of months, the girl decided that she had had enough and told her boyfriend that she wanted to break up because all he could think about was sex. The teenager didn't take the breakup well and told the girl that he would send the explicit photos to her father to get back at her. The 14-year-old girl was understandably distraught by this and believed that her life was over. Soon after the breakup, the girl received a text message from her ex's mother who claimed that her teenage son had taken his own life. To make things worse, after hearing this shocking news, the young girl's father revealed that he had received the nude pictures of her. The story took a very dark turn when the father told her that he liked the nude pictures and began to sexually abuse her. After around a year, the abuse came to an abrupt end after the girl went to the school nurse and told her about what was happening. The nurse reported it to the police, and the 41-year-old, who also can't be named, was arrested and charged for his disturbing crimes. After tracking the IP address, investigators soon uncover that the girl's 16-year-old boyfriend was actually her own father the whole time, and the entire relationship was a lie. The young girl's father faces up to 250 years in prison. Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for a video, then please leave it in the comments below. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to see more videos like this.